That's all I have to say. You won't believe what the CEO of JP Morgan's Project Onx, Umer Farrow, just said. I'm going to show you guys something right now that's really suspicious. I have previously similarly addressed this issue. However, I'd like to bring it to your attention. Once more, the project has officially begun. He suffered from depression in October 2020, as you may recall. And concurrently, Mr. Tyrone Lin, who oversees Project Onx, is someone you all know. The establishment of this group coincided with his work, underscoring the significance of this data. I've talked about this before. Previously, J.P. Morgan used Ripple as a temporary solution to delay the development of their own database. However, their attempt to do so in 2024 was unsuccessful because of their October 2020 announcement, which was made several months later. It just so happens that the SEC followed Ripple. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and hit that like button. Some of you may believe that this is a conspiracy, and for that, I sincerely feel sorry for you, but it's not. All of this is political, which is why Risen XRP is currently among the most strictly regulated companies as we enter the bull market for the cryptocurrency industry. Get ready for an incredible ride. CNBC released a statement the day following the approval of the Bitcoin ETF. Why did they bring it up this day after the BTC ETF approval? That's what they were saying, and to illustrate, let me give an example of the Bank of Mitsubishi in Toko, Tokyo which needs to transfer $100 million in yen to the New York branch and convert it to you need $100 million in yen in Tokyo and $100 million in dollars in New York. If you can do that simultaneously, the bank will release half of its capital. That's a significant issue, but even though we haven't made it yet, it appears that we will soon. Indeed, JP Morgan believes that XRP and Ripple will play a significant role. Now, if you look at the general population, Mr. Umar has publicly stated this belief. Dante and I may not agree on this one, but if you look at the public blockchain ledgers, they aren't suitable for use in today's big transactions, and I'll tell you why. Assuming that we were delivering $100 million as part of a transaction worth $100 million, let's imagine that UBS and I were merely making it up. As you know, the two banks are transferring $100 million to UBS via Ethereum. Now that validators are verifying the transaction, who should I file a lawsuit against if something goes wrong? You can trust and code as much as you like, but you can't really go to a place like a code court where you can go and have a discussion. At this point, perhaps public infrastructure will eventually get there with things like verifiable credentials, but that time is far off. You need to find a place where individuals can conduct transactions in a reliable and trustworthy manner. Financial entities are subject to a system of accountability. We still need to see whether this occurs through unified ledgers or another method. Unified ledgers and bridge, but they're all attempting to accomplish this, to be honest. To be honest, we're working on another project. Global Air One at the mosque, along with Citibank and others, embodies the essence of you. You should have access to a regulated financial infrastructure of some kind. Common knowledge dictates that public institutions, such as central banks, should grant access to commercial institutions, such as banks. This means you should have access to a regulated financial infrastructure, and private and public institutions, including banks, should be able to access the same financial infrastructure. The swift and widespread adoption of a global stable coin, potentially under the sole control of a private company's incentives, will warrant the highest level of regulatory expectations, which will also apply to non-banks. I really do. The international layer should be in charge of regulating the flow of money. If not, you will simply do so. Constantly be thinking in terms of silos, not to mention, in my opinion, that there are native tokens in all of these silos, and I won't even get into that because it's a completely different problem altogether. The way he discusses the unified ledger, the bridge, and RLN is remarkable, and there's ample proof that the concepts under development remain unresolved, with numerous NDAs in place behind the scenes. Ripple is a key participant, there's no denying that Ripple has a foothold in this. Did you see the bit where he mentioned financial infrastructure? 
The term Ripple refers to financial infrastructure. It is widely known that the information presented here is sourced from the BIS Innovation Hub, the Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure, and Ripple is a regulated market infrastructure. In essence, both of these entities emphasize the need for a regulated financial infrastructure that is accessible to all parties, including private banks and public institutions like central banks. The strictest regulations will apply to a worldwide stablecoin that has the potential for rapid and widespread adoption, as well as a global currency solely under the control of a private corporation. They desire an increase in its token value. How did he say it? The sooner people understand what's happening behind the scenes and cease worrying about the price of XRP, the better. Some individuals perceive this entire situation as a conspiracy due to the absence of official information from reputable news sources who refuse to reveal their actions. Try your hardest to believe that Ripple and his virtual currency, XRP, will be quite valuable, considering what you know about the reasons I've discussed previously on why logic dictates that it cannot be absurdly inexpensive a high price is necessary for scaling. If you plan to make a larger purchase, it's important to pay attention to Umar's comments and ensure they understand that I agree. The only thing I would add is that, in my opinion, they must become genuine public goods to be perceived as such. Furthermore, our entanglement with technology is not solely due to our early adoption, it also stems from the fact that the technology's owner has resurfaced. Returning to the token problem, ABC is my token on my blockchain. Tokenomics is an intriguing idea, and I truly want to draw everyone to my blockchain, as that's how my token increases in value. I believe that tokenomics fundamentals also make convergence extremely difficult. You had to be known, after all. Truly, as a public benefit, I hope we could kindly attend one of their private meetings. If so, please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, where you can also read what he says. You know that they want a higher token value, and I genuinely want to draw everyone to my blockchain because that's how my token increases. Listen, XRP hasn't seen anything as of yet, but we've already discussed this in the past. You know that Bitcoin went from $1 to $73,000, and Ethereum went from $0.31 cents to $5,000. XRP will continue where it is. It's the greatest digital asset on earth right now, up to 100%, and I'm not a megalomaniac. XRP is different from Ethereum because I own not only Bitcoin, but also other assets. Over the past 10 years, they have built a trusting network that has allowed the XRP ledger to operate without significant downtime. Soon, they will scale the system to the billions, and eventually to the trillions. I didn't like the technology, but keep in mind that this is something we've never seen before when it's ready to use. You understand how awesome we are living in an era where financial infrastructure is implementing regulations, safeguards, and new technologies. Blockchain will be crucial, isn't that right? The new revolution is here. Those who do not seize the opportunity await evolution. You really deserve to be in this position, after all. I'm referring to people who are paying attention. Since all of you are ahead, let's simply speak for them, shall we? For example, imagine not taking advantage of the people you talk to and then saying, Oh, I don't understand crypto. Oh, I see. You just don't get it. Attempt to comprehend. You moron, you are absolutely correct. It is simply one of those things that I am unable to precisely define. Yes, it's brain-dead, indoctrinated, unsafe, and based on fear. Fear is what corrects people. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all. I do value every one of you who has listened. People, please share your thoughts with me in the comments section below.